When it comes to these TV programs, so far, so good. Now I want all the hot dogs, please. No, 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 yeah, no you don't have I'm to buying do that. all the I'm hot right dogs. Here. No, 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 you don't have to. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 first scenes in TV shows. Relax, this is not even a date. It's not, it's just two people going out to dinner and not having sex. <laughs> Sounds like a date to me. <laughs> For this list, we're taking a look at small screen shows that immediately hooked us with their captivating opening sequences. <laughs> Number 10, Murder on the Beach, Revenge. If you love me. In this flash forward to season one's midpoint, the characters will come to know gather for a fire and ice themed engagement party on a moonlit night. Fire and ice, beginnings and endings, and the love between a man and a woman. The celebration takes a turn for the worse as gunshots are fired and a body is discovered on the beach. Oh my God. <gasps> In the spirit of any addictive soap opera, this mysterious setup sinks its teeth into the audience, guaranteeing that they'll be sticking around to learn who got shot. With great imagery and foreshadowing, Revenge certainly started off with a bang. Daniel! Get away from my son! Daniel! Daniel, please! <laughs> Number 9. Frozen Fry, Futurama Here's to another lousy millennium. Most cartoons take about a season to perfect their animation style and humor. Futurama, on the other hand, came right out of the gate looking pretty promising. It's not working out, Fry. <laughs> I put your stuff out on the sidewalk! The opening sequence wonderfully sets the mood with a reference to Star Trek. Space. It seems to go on and on forever. But then you get to the end and the gorilla starts throwing barrels at you followed by loser pizza delivery boy Fry getting cryogenically frozen. <laughs> Over the course of 1,000 years, aliens destroy man, man rebuilds, aliens destroy man again, and Fry wakes up in a stunning future where aliens and man coexist. It's a bright new day and a second chance for Fry. My God, it's the future. My parents, my coworkers. My girlfriend. I'll never see any of them again. Yahoo! Number eight, see Frank kill dog, House of Cards. There are two kinds of pain. The sort of pain that makes you strong, or useless pain. The sort of pain that's only suffering. I have no patience for useless things. Sometimes you've got to get your hands dirty for the greater good. Francis Underwood makes his philosophy very clear in the opening of House of Cards as a car hits a dog. It's not gonna make it. Rather than letting nature take its course, Francis puts the dog out of its misery. All the while, he hauntingly explains to the audience why America needs more people like him to handle the unpleasant things in life. Moments like this require someone who will act, who will do the unpleasant thing, the necessary thing. We're given a small glimpse of what Francis is capable of and what he's willing to do for the greater good. There. No more pain. Number seven, Will on America, the newsroom. I'm not letting you go back to the airport without answering the question. Nobody writes energizing speeches better than Aaron Sorkin. The opening to The Newsroom contains some of his best dialogue ever, as Will McAvoy is pushed to say what makes America the world's greatest country. Why is America not the greatest great country in the world, Professor? That's my answer. Finally, Will unleashes a three-minute monologue on why America isn't all it's cracked up to be. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined. Deep down, we all know America isn't perfect. And Will relentlessly dishes out all the things other journalists would be too afraid to say. The impact of this masterfully written scene alone was enough to earn Jeff Daniels an Emmy. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. America is not the greatest country in the world anymore. Enough? Number six, Laura Palmer's body is discovered, 
Twin Peaks. Gone fishing. Nowadays, audiences are used to most television episodes feeling like mini-movies. In the early 90s, however, there was a clear distinction between movie drama and TV drama. <laughs> Director David Lynch defied that distinction by bringing a genuine cinematic tone to the pilot of Twin Peaks. The first scene immerses the audience in a filmic world as a fisherman discovers Laura Palmer's dead body. The alluring atmosphere, music, and cinematography prepare us for a grand experience unlike anything we've ever seen on television. Lucy, this is Pete Martell. Lucy, put Harry on the horn. Sheriff, it's Pete Martell up at the mill. Um, I'm going to transfer it to the phone on the table by the red chair, the, the red chair against the wall. Number 5. A cop that doesn't play by the rules, Luther. Filmed from mesmerizing angles and set to a heart-pounding score, this scene drops us right into the middle of an intense chase as DCI John Luther pursues a serial killer named Henry Madsen. The chase takes them to the top of a building under construction. On a catwalk, the two have a standoff that leaves Henry dangling over a deep drop. You're gonna fall, Henry! Oh, God! Luther uses this opportunity to interrogate the killer. While he gets his answer and the victim is found alive, Luther still elects himself Henry's judge, jury, and executioner. Case! Please! Four, plane Crash, Lost The first episode of Lost is like the Titanic of TV pilots. It was the most expensive pilot ever made and nobody knew what to expect. J.J. <laughs> Abrams proved from the opening shot, though, that this was a worthwhile investment guaranteed to suck viewers in. Lost plays its best hand up front as a group of survivors flee from an exceptionally filmed plane crash. You don't know who these people are, what happened to them, or where they are now, but the opening leaves you desperately wanting to find out more. Hey, you! Come here! I need to get this woman away from these fumes. Take her over there. Stay with her. If her contractions occur any closer than three minutes apart, call out for me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Right back, okay? Number three, White Walkers, Game of Thrones. Speaking of risky pilots, nobody was sure if HBO could do justice to George R. R. Martin's acclaimed fantasy novels. If the astounding title sequence didn't immediately convince you Game of Thrones was going to be an amazing show, the first scene certainly did. i never seen a thing like this, not every in my life. The Night's Watch ventures into a snowy, heartless terrain littered with icy corpses. Suddenly, the rangers are ambushed and learn the hard way that winter is coming. Full of unforgettable visuals and tension, this is an exquisite appetizer of even greater things to come. <laughs> Number 2. Walter White's videotape, Breaking Bad. There are going to be some things, things that you'll come to learn about me in the next few days. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere, a pair of trousers goes flying through the air as an RV crashes. Out of the vehicle emerges the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. In his underwear and armed with a gun, he makes a goodbye video for his family. Skyler, you are the love of my life. I hope you know that. Police sirens go off in the distance, and the lone man known as Walter White prepares for a showdown. <laughs> what can you say except, WTF, I hope the rest of this show is this wild and unpredictable? Lucky for you, Breaking Bad was.
Before we come to a close with our top opening scene, here are a few honorable mentions. Open your eyes and look at what you did! <laughs> look or I'll cut your eyelids right off your face. You ever pretend to be one of us again? And I'll kill you. Got it? Yeah. Have a nice day now. Yes, this is his family. So why is Michael so happy? Because he's decided to never speak to these people again. But really, look at these pants. I've seen pants bunch up I have before, never yes. seen a bunch up like this in my life. I this have. is like a five inch bunch up I got here. Well, you don't have to play with it. Is it a bad thing? <laughs> Maybe it's not such a bad thing, you know? 1968, I was 12 years old. A lot happened that year. Denny McLean won 31 games. The Mod Squad hit the air, and I graduated from Hillcrest Elementary and entered junior high school. But we'll get to that. Number one. Rick kills little girl zombie, The Walking Dead. Little girl? I'm a policeman. Little girl. A police car drives down a seemingly run-of-the-mill street. As the sheriff gets out of his car, however, we discover that the road is actually paved with carnage. It becomes clear to the audience that this is the end of days. <laughs> we soon find out what caused the epidemic as a little zombie girl shows her face to the sheriff. Epic, while also being subtle and quiet, this opening to The Walking Dead introduces us to a grim world where hope, innocence, and humanity will inevitably be forsaken. Do you agree with our list? Yes. What's your favorite first scene in a TV show? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Uh, mm -hmm.